Um, hi, my name is Sheridan Zuther, and I just came out with my solo debut album, Songs from the Silo, and uh, it's been an awesome process that um, we wanted to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> wanted to talk to you about. Um, and um, this, the idea that I started with Songs from the Silo really started about seven years ago on a long drive that I had from Minneapolis to uh, my family farm in North Dakota. Um, and something happened, I don't know, I was feeling down about something. I think I broke up with a, a guy or something. And I was <laughs> um, making that long drive and this, thinking that the, the, the farm has always been a point of solace for me. It's always been a point of rec recollecting myself, just bringing myself back to a humble place, a simpler place, and just restoring myself and, and thank, thanking that I had that kind of place to go to and wishing that other people knowing that other people don't always have that sacred and safe place to go to, wishing that for other people as well. So I wanted an album. I knew I wanted to do an album a long time ago, um, 10, 15 years ago, but I just didn't know what to do. I didn't want to just throw a bunch of songs on an album together. and I wanted to ha it to have meaning, to have some direction, because um, I love theater, I love uh, musicals and storytelling, and I think people can connect more with that if they have that storyline to, to, to hold on to and connect to. So once I had that questioned to me from another musician actually, um, I think it was the guy that I actually broke up with, <laughs> asked me the question, um, what, what makes you unique? What makes your music and your style of your performance unique and interesting to other people? So when I was making that drive, I was like, that's it. That's, that's the story I want. I want it to be about this place that I came from where I started my first musical journey by crawling in a grain silo, an empty grain silo, and started singing and making noises in that silo because it's concrete. It's about 30 feet high um, with a tin roof, and there's... Um, you know, there's these little circles in it, uh, in the top, so air hole, you know, and lets in light. And it's, it's really lovely during the day, actually. It's a, it's a beautiful place to go. And so I would spend hours, literally hours in there, and just singing and making noises. And the cats would come in, sing, uh, and, and just hang out with me. Um, and as a farm kid, I was the youngest in my family, my uh, sister was nine years older and my brother was seven years older than me. And so I really kind of got left to my own devices. I was, you know, I, the only real chores that I had was to keep our 20, 25, 30 barn cats alive and our dog alive, you know, by feeding and watering and making sure they're doing okay. So, and some animals, too. I always got a, a calf in the spring to take care of and whatnot. So I, I was always out in the barn, and the barn is connected to the silo. And so naturally, that's where I would just go, and I would spend my time. So it's, it, it was about starting there at that place and growing. Then, you know, <laughs> then the next step was getting on some hay bales and singing to a crowd of Holstein cows. And cows actually love music. They love uh, singing, and I would spend hours in our pasture and sing to them. And then, you know, just going and working in schools and going to music camps and knowing that along the way I just wanted to sing and be a musician and make music and make stories. I knew, I also knew that, you know, um, I, I knew I loved all of that combination together.
So once I knew about seven years ago I wanted to make that album, I started saving. <laughs> I started putting my money into a savings account. And I knew, and I, because at that time it was very, um, you know, crowdcast and, uh, sorry, uh, crowdfunding was a very um, popular idea. And I saw other artists doing it, and I knew it wasn't for me. <laughs> I knew I did not want to go that route because um, I saw these other artists and they had to answer to their to their public and their people, their donors, and they had to write blogs and they had to keep track. I did not want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to do things on my time, on my terms, and so I knew that I had to come up with that money myself. And I wanted to come up with an album that wasn't just second rate, like it. Like, I wanted a good, solid, beautiful product. So I started saving. And then uh, started having these ideas of uh, just writing journals of songs that I wanted to do and ideas that I had and all these journals. And um, three years later, in 2019, I went to go see um, a colleague of mine, Richie Cole, who is, uh, was a great jazz bebop saxophone, alto sax player. And I was really connected with uh, Richie because um, with, through my work with Five by Design, um, the vocal quintet that I toured with for seven years, but really worked with for, since 2005, really. Um, we've been together up until recent, so, and singing together. So through my work with Five by Design, I met Richie, um, through a Phil Matson reunion concert, uh, Five by Design sang on that concert. Richie was in the wings, and we sang our set, and we came off, and Richie said, Hey, hey, you kids, you kids are awesome. I want to work with you kids. And so we're like, Ha, ah, what? Richie Cole, you played on Manhattan Transfers, Birdland. You you played with Anita O'Day. I mean, you you he was uh, with uh, the Richie uh, um, uh, uh, Buddy Rich Band. That is where he started. I mean, he's played with all these amazing people, and we're like, do you want to work with us? <laughs> like, oh yeah, sure, great. And through that f um, relationship, forged a great friendship. Richie, to me, um, as soon as I met Richie, was like, I had known him for years. And maybe other people that meet him, Alton, I don't know if, if you felt that way too, but uh, you meet Richie and he just has this warmth um, about him. And it, I feel like I met him in a, lifetimes ago and we just reconnected. It was very special. And um, uh, he helped me some, through some rough times. I helped him through some rough times uh, personally. And so you, you get those very close relationships. And so I knew that I wanted to include him on the album making process uh, because also he, had, he was one of my biggest supporters. And he, every time we talked, Cher, you got to do, do, do an album. You got to record. You got to record. And he would send me um, these handwritten charts in the mail so cool. And he wrote um, a, a song called Sheridan's Theme, and it said lyrics to come. And it was um, very cool to um, get these gifts from this artist um, who's written so many um, great songs. You open up any I Real book and any jazz book, and his name is in there. Um, so and Richie passed away on a Saturday morning, and um, immediately um, I was devastated. Packed up everything, uh, went back to our farm, and um, that just solidified the theme of the album for me. Because again, just going through something that was very heartbreaking, I wanted to go back to a safe place, a, a a, a quiet place where I felt like I just could re-energize. And so it took me a while um, to get through that, to, to, to get over Richie's death and um, figuring out what I wanted to do next. Um, and unfortunately, we lost another great in our um, local Minneapolis Twin Cities jazz scene, Debbie Duncan, who had a stroke um, at the end of 2020 and passed away shortly thereafter. And 
uh, they had a celebration of life for Debbie in, I believe, February or March of 2021 and of course I s attended that um, celebration of life for Debbie Duncan um, on Zoom and there was this person named Adi Ashaya that came on and uh, I learned that he was um, one of the main uh, pianists, uh, musicians that she worked with and uh, her albums were produced by him and orchestrated and I I love Debbie's work. Uh, I had all of a lot of her albums. I want to say all of them because I know she had quite a few. Um, but when I saw Audie and I heard him talk and knew the backstory and already knew his work through Debbie, I said, "That's the guy. That's that's who I need. That's who I need on this album." And so I wrote. Um, I, I don't know how I got your email or what, maybe it was on your uh, website. And I wrote you this email and I said, here's what I have so far. <laughs> here's what I know. Um, I have these charts by um, Richie Cole, by this great guy, um, uh, jazz artist Richie Cole, um, who's already written three band, big band charts. And I also had already, I believe, I had already... Um, hired um, Anne Hampton Calloway to write a song for me um, because there just was a fire that was under me um, after seeing that celebration of life with of Debbie's and going we're losing so many people <laughs> and and I I said I want I, I wanted certain kind of uh, certain people on the album and the time is now there is a it was the this like huh, there's the time is running out <laughs> and I have to get this done now, and I had enough money in the coffers by then too, and it was it was time. Um, even with that the pandemic happening, it was time. So I wrote Audi an email and I said, "Here's what I have so far, and I need a producer. I need someone who knows what they're doing, because I kind of know, but I don't." And I, what do you think? And you called me like 15 minutes after I sent that email and you said, I'm interested. And I almost started bawling and I was like, what, really? Oh, yes, okay, great. Because um, I said, you know, I'm not going to go for second rate. I'm going to go, who's the first person if I would ask for, this, for the moon, who would I choose? And you you were there and I said okay this is what do you think and you said yes and I was amazed and I go okay okay great uh, what's next and you said well let's meet <laughs> I go okay and we um, got a, a meeting together and um, started talking about the ideas behind the album and you had some trepidation with uh, how how things might go about because I had so many ideas and um, and and beans in the pot. I said, okay, I want I want um, classical and jazz and country and pop and musical musical theater, Broadway and gospel. And you go, ooh, wait a minute, that's a lot of beans. <laughs> And I don't know if we sh if we should go that route. Yeah, I was proven wrong once again. You know. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Usually, when when I'm brought to a project, it was it, it's uh, I'm I get it I get called as the arranger, and a lot of times will become the producer by default. Mm. And here you have it, everything ready, and I didn't really know how I fit in this whole thing. The one thing I knew is that you want to have some kind of theme. You you want to follow some kind of sound, and and I thought maybe my role is to get you in line and 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 yeah. try to figure out how we focus on one particular kind of sound and and message that you're trying to. And my fear was that the album would sound like. Like a demo, right? And I didn't want it to be one big demo, yeah. So once again, <laughs> but I feel that because you um, raised that flag, 
it made me think about the process uh, a lot, put it m even more focus in, into the album and the idea behind it so that um, it would have more clarity. Because I do tend to go, pew, 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 you know, <laughs> all over the place. I needed somebody to kind of round in and, and thresh that in. Do you know that I really got the idea of this album only when I went to see the release concert? What? Yeah. I mean, I finally said, <laughs> oh, okay. Now I get it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, I'm hoping it's with um, the, when one sits down and listens to the album, um, Adi was the person who encouraged me to um, s record in the silo too because when I when we started talking about how we're going to record what exactly was uh, you know really um, trimming the list down of what we're, what we're going to do um, I said I really I would love to have you know to record in a, in a silo, but that's kind of hokey, right? I mean, that's, who does that? And, he's, and you said, no, you, sh you should figure out how to do that. And I go, oh, you think so? Okay, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll, then I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I figured it out and, um, and did a, used a, uh, um, a silo that was only six miles from our farm, our family farm, very, very similar to the one that I grew up in. That was, it was also important for me to do that in that area, to record in a similar silo. And um, I brought a sound engineer with me, a friend. See, and the thing is, um, I say about this album, I don't think I could have done this album five years ago. Certainly not ten years ago. Um, even though this is my debut album, I'm a little older. <laughs> um, this is uh, after years of relationships that you've built through your career, and I, I'm sure you feel the same mm -hmm. way. You know the kind of people that you can call, and, um, and, and you build this network of, 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 um, of people that you can that you love to work with, that know that you're weak on this certain point, but if you call this person and you ask them to take care of it, they'll take care of it, and they'll do it in a very good way, and they're, they're going to make you look better too because it's all the, the, the kind of the, everyone that I asked to be a part of this album, um, except for one, said yes, and that was really, really amazing. You said yes. After you said, after Adi said yes to this album, then I, I said to you too, gee, I really want to sing with Robert Robinson because Robert was my very first call when I got to Minneapolis in 1998 from uh, Kansas City from getting out of college and doing my opera degree. And in Kansas City, I loved uh, going to all these great um, churches with amazing gospel choirs. And you come up to Minneapolis, where is that? We had three sessions, right? Yeah. I think we had five. No, as far as uh, the basic, like the bands, we had... Uh, yeah. The jazz. We had um, the big one with Richie, uh, Ricky and yeah. Paul and mm -hmm. Joe Elliott, and then we had um, the small group sessions for, um, with you, Jeff Bailey, and Jill, mm -hmm. Michael Pilhoffer, and then we did one big band. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that is all and we had. And then we had the stuff that Aaron did, was, which was... Uh, right. Yeah. The, uh, then we did uh, two vocal um, uh, sessions. Yeah. Right. Um, another reason why I wanted to bring Adi on uh, board was his relationship with other great uh, musicians around um, the cities, and because I know some, you know, I know some great musicians, but you know a lot more, <laughs> and the rules behind all of that too. So I need, I needed somebody that knew that, and thankfully. Well. Um you had the R&B side to the album that I felt like needed a little special touch. 
and uh, I couldn't think uh, anybody better than uh, the two Peterson brothers. Yeah. We had Paul Peterson on bass and Ricky Peterson on keyboards. Yeah. He played uh, B3, um, this beautiful organ. Where is it? Over there. Um, and um, Michael Bland was the drummer. Yeah. Joe Elliott on guitar. So that was a very solid band for that R&B stuff. Right. Uh, then we had the jazz small group that included uh, Jeff Bailey on bass and uh, Michael P Pilhofer on drums. And you on piano. And I played piano yeah. and some roads right. on that. Yeah. And then we had the, the small big band. Jeff was playing bass on the big band, but we also had Greg Schutte and Four Horns. And the Four Horns included uh, Pete Whitman, uh, Dave Graff, Brad Shermack, and Aaron, Aaron Hedenstrom. Yeah, uh, very nice section. Yeah. And I forgot one more guy that we added kind of as a, an afterthought to the R&B session because there were two songs, one by Aaron mm -hmm. um, Gabriel and we okay. also used him on uh, America because uh, America was uh, kind of had an A and B to that because we started traditional, classical, high key, D flat. And after we had that, we kind of changed course and went to R&B. And after we had the whole thing in D flat, I felt like, you know, this is kind of high for... For right. the R and B thing, let's let's change keys. So once the key was changed, the style was changed, and uh, and and you uh, did it more in six eight then too. Right. So kind of last minute, we called uh, Marshall Bassam to yeah. to come and do the gospel piano thing, which kind of sealed the the sound. And completely. you know, I feel um, America the Beautiful really is a great transition in within the album because you're starting off with that classical sound, going into a little bit more of an R&B, and then just full out And the fun thing about that, I didn't even think about it, but we use the horn section here, the four horns, on the R&B stuff for that song. That's right. And the orchestra with their horns on the classical thing and some additional stuff on the R&B was like a whole crazy thing that, great you know, meld of of the, the of everything coming together on that song yeah of america the beautiful i'm told a lot of people are telling me that's one of their favorite um songs on the album cool. so yeah. we'll have to make a, a a video with that too um the video uh process with it when we were uh, in, the, uh, in the recording studio here, and this is uh, Creation, where there's been so many great albums uh, made here in this historic studio, too. Um, yeah, and that was another, another thing that we had talked about, which was where, where to record. And I've, I lived just in close approximation of uh, creation for years and didn't even know that it was here because there's, it's very um, inconspicuous. When you go yeah. by it, you're like, what? There's a recording studio in there? And there's yeah. all these amazing musicians that go through these doors? I mean, it's so yeah. cool. Steve and I know each other more than 30 years, and uh, it's my favorite place to come and record. It's very, a, because there is only one room here, too, I mean, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people going through the doors, you know, I mean, there's, really. it's, it's kind of a home, uh, yeah. homey place to be, so, yeah. It was really cool to have Kurt Niska, Terrence Niska, and Lori Carpenter Niska, all from Five by Design, the voices and harmonies that I've sung with for years, they were a big part of my musical journey. Uh, so they had to be on the album. Uh, along with other Five by Design connections, Tanner Taylor on piano with the Condensed Band, Dave Strong on tenor sax, he came in for a few solo lines, and Jim Geddes, halfway across the world in Taipei. He recorded a section for me on his alto, tenor, and berry saxophones. 
Um, and it's just really special to have these musicians that I've toured with, um, you know, on the album. Fabulous, you look so fabulous. Oh, fabulous, you look so fabulous. Feel the night, the night is calling. Feel it burn inside. You got the right to bring. Up in here, just right. Spark up a light, get into motion. It's time for. 